Okay, hello everyone. This is Victor Momo from Excel Moments. I start this video with a statement: XLOOKUP returns a range or a reference. Most of us know that XLOOKUP returns a value, but indeed it does return a range or a reference. But depending on where and how it's used, the context, it could return a range, a reference, or a value. But I don't think it's enough for us to have that information. It's more important to know how to use this to our advantage. So I have a few use cases here to buttress this point. Okay, so let's get into the first example. What I have here is a list, fictitious, I should say, of you know salespersons, the items sold, and the amount. So let's take for the first example that I want to return uh, the amount sold by Michael J. White, okay? I can use an XLOOKUP function for that, right? So XLOOKUP, the lookup value is Michael J. White. I'm looking it up in the salespersons column, and I want to return the amount right okay and i do enter that's 80 and that's correct the value here is 80. but i will make the point that it's actually returning a reference or a range but because you've simply used an equal sign that's the reason why it's giving you a value let me start off by saying if i did something like this row of z12 this will tell me the row that z12 you know the cell z12 is on okay so it will tell me 12. I could have done the same with the column and it probably tell me 26, I think, that's um, Z. Okay, this would only work when you feed it with a range or a reference. That's correct. So now, let's put a row around this X lookup, just to make the point. Go to the end. See that it gives you a row of 13. How is it giving you 13? Because that's where Michael J. White can be found. This is row 13. Okay, and if you did the column, it would probably give you 5 which is column E, which is where that value can be found. Okay, so you see that it does indeed return a reference, but depending on how it's used, it could return a reference, a range, or a value. Okay, now that we have that at the back of our minds, how can we use this in some real use cases? So let me take the real first example, which is here. What I want to do is I want to sum up from the top of the table till the amount that belongs to Bruce Lee here. So meaning that I'll go all the way from 80 all the way till I stop here, 70. If you look down at the status bar, you see it gives me a sum of 1,000. So how do I do this? I will start up using the sum function. The normal way I will do a sum. This is my first cell. Now, normally I would say, oh, E5 to E14, for example. But no, I would use an X lookup to find the address of the cell I'm interested in. So I will do X lookup. I will look up Bruce Lee. I'll look him up in salesperson and I'll return what the amount. Okay, so I close the X lookup, I close the sum, and I have 1000. See, so now you're using an X lookup within a sum function. If it wasn't within a sum function, it may return a value. Or used in this context, it returns a range and you can use it to solve your problem. Next one is similar to the first, but maybe just a little more advanced. What I want to do in this case is I have two salespersons here, and I want to um, you know, sum up the amounts between them on the table. Okay, so meaning that if I have Bruce Lee and Steven Seagal now, I'm pretty much doing this. <clears throat> yeah, which gives me a sum of 630. The good thing about the sum function is that it doesn't really matter how you put the references, right? If you say sum E14 to E5, it's the same thing as saying E5 to E14. It doesn't change anything. So it doesn't matter how the names are ordered here, you know, the sum function would work. So how do we start this off? We start off with a sum. For us to know where we are starting off, maybe for Bruce Lee, for example, we'll do an X lookup, similar to what we did the first time. X lookup, we'll look him up here and we'll return amount, okay? So that's the first range. We put a colon just the same way as if I was doing E5 to E this. The next thing I'll do is I'll do another X lookup. And I'll look for Steven Seagal. Okay. And then same thing here. And then I return the amount. Very similar. So I close the X lookup and I close the sum. And I have 630. So you see here, we are taking advantage of the fact that X lookup returns a reference or a range. And we are using it within the sum function. Let me go to the second example. In this next example, I'm going to be using the X lookup. You know, to create a named range. I have, you know, a video on my channel, which I probably will just link below. Explain this in a little more detail. 
But for simplicity here, because XLOOKUP returns a range, I can use it to create a dynamic named range. What I want to do here is I want to create a range that starts from B2 and goes to the last non-blank cell. If this um, number of cells, you know, increase, decrease, contract, expand, I want my range to adjust accordingly. So it's a dynamic range. So the first thing I need to be able to do is to find, you know, where I have the last non-blank cell, okay? But sometimes it could look like you could just start from the top and then, you know, come all the way down. But it's easier to start from the bottom in the event that maybe you had a blank cell here. So what I'm saying is that for me, the last non-blank cell that I'm interested in is the first non-blank cell if I start from the bottom and I start coming up, right? So if I go to the bottom of this column and I start coming up, the first non-blank cell I run into, obviously, is the last non-blank cell if I were starting from the top, okay? So I'm only doing that because I know that there could be a blank. I'm just assuming that there could be a blank. If not, I will actually just start from the top and come all the way down. So I'm going to start from the bottom. So my search is not from top to bottom. It's going to be from bottom to top. The first non-blank cell it finds is the cell I'm interested in. Okay. So I'm going to start with an X lookup and say, oh, if these cells are not blank. Okay. So if they are not blank, I'll say, okay, I'll start up with a true. Right. So I'll say true. Look for a true. In this range, I'm checking now. What I'm checking is, I'm checking, is this not blank? For all these cells, of course, it's going to be true, 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 because they are not blank, right? Okay. What do I want to return? I want to return the same range. Okay. Now, if not found, you know, skip that, skip the match mode. The next thing is the search mode. So now I'm searching from bottom to top. So from bottom to top, I'm just going to do minus one. Okay. And then I do enter. You can see it returns 24. If I delete this 24 now, it gives me 15. So it means it's able to recognize where the last non-blank, you know, um, cell is. So once I have this information here, I can use this in my name manager. So I can create a dynamic range using this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start from B2 and it's going to go all the way till this value. Don't forget that this 24 here is not actually returning the value. It's returning a range. So we're going to the name manager. I do new and I will call this um, DAYN dynamic range. Uh, then here, I start. Um, I start from B two. So I start from B two. I put a colon. Okay, so I put a colon and I paste my X lookup. That's all. So it's like saying B two two wherever the last non-blank cell is. Do okay. All right, and that range is created. You can go into, um, you know, the name manager. Once you select this, you can see that. The range is what it should be. If you take out 24 and 15, for example, go back to the name manager and just, you know, see, you can see the range. The range is appropriate. Anyway, you can already even tell that from here, <laughs> you know, this always responds accordingly. So meaning that you can use the XLOOKUP to create a dynamic named range because XLOOKUP returns a range. Okay, now to the last example. You know, taking advantage of the fact that XLOOKUP returns a range. So what do I have here? I have a table which has, you know, IDs, names, locations, and the ages. Then I have another table where I want to extract data into. So I have the IDs and I want to extract maybe say the location. Now what I've done in this case is I've put the possible columns here, name, location, and age, you know, um, as a drop down. So meaning that if I change it from location, I want it to return the location, age, and all that. Now, this is a classic case of like index match, right? Because what you will be doing is you look for this ID. So you kind of match it in the rows. Then you now match, if you are interested in location, you match that across, you know, uh, the top header row there and wherever they intersect, that's what you return. So that's how I would have solved it without X lookup, right? I just use an index match. But now you can use an X lookup because X lookup returns for you a range. So let's start off. How do we solve this? The first thing we would have done is just to do X lookup. I will look for this ID, right? And then where am I looking it up? I'm going to be looking it up in this range here, right? This is not a table, so. <laughs> okay, so I'm looking it up in this range. But now in terms of the return array, I don't know if I'm returning, you know, the name, the location, or the age. But I need a range there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use another X lookup. Because I know that XLOOKUP returns a range. So what I would do is I would pull up another XLOOKUP. Now, this time, I'm looking up this location. 
Okay, so I want to know, you know, where location, what column, what row, what range, you know, belongs to location. So I look up location. I may need to make this absolute. Okay, where do I look it up? I look it up here. Huh? Okay, and what do I return? I return this range. Now you need to watch this carefully. So what this means is that X lookup look for location. So if it looks for location here, it will see location in this second column. And what it's going to return, because you've selected this entire range, so there are like three ranges in there. Let's say C5 to C11, D5, D11, E5, D, um, D11, E11. So it means that if it looks and it sees location, it will return D5 to D11. If it looks and it sees age, it will return E5 to E11 because it returns a range. If it was returning a value, then you know you wouldn't be able to use this. So for this reason, this would work. You can close the bracket. You can close, okay, and now you can see the locations. Uh, yes, let's sorry, Alt E S F formulas, okay, and now you see that ID 057. That's this is able to return Lagos. If I change my location here and I change this to name. You can see that it returns for me the name. You can just use the 0057. That's um, Jacob, right? And if I change this to um, age, it returns the age. So this is taking advantage of the fact that the XLOOKUP can return a range. And using that XLOOKUP, which is more or less working like a match, it can tell me which range I'm interested in. And then the lookup works you know, just the way I expect it to. So these are just a few use cases to show that you know, XLOOKUP returns a range. And that's not, you know, just enough in itself, but, you know, using it in some, you know, I would say use cases to get problems solved. Let me just show you something using the uh, formula evaluator. Okay. So uh, let me look at maybe just this example. I think I should just do this before I leave. So if you remember this example, what we did here was we actually did, um, you know, a sum from E5 to where Bruce Lee was found. And he was found here, okay? And then it summed up all those values. Let's take this formula into the formula evaluator. So we'll do formulas and we'll do evaluate formula. I typically we'll do alt MV. So now let's evaluate step by step. So you can see it starts up with E5, right? Now this is the X lookup. X lookup of G7. G7 is going to be Bruce Lee. So let's evaluate. See, it gives you Bruce Lee. It's looking, this is where it's going to look up. This is what it's going to return. Do evaluate again. You can see Bruce Lee, it's turned this into a range, the lookup range. Now the return array is turned that into a range too. Now this is where it actually executes the X lookup. See what happens when you do evaluate, you can see it evaluates to a range. And that's the reason why it works. So just, you know, to make that point finally. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you like the video, please hit the like button. You can also subscribe to the channel excel moments for now i'm out